Peggy Hoffman here with the Bill Highway webinar. How are we all doing? I see that we've got about um, 26, 25, 26 attendees joining us today. This is totally awesome. Hello to Alicia, to Allison, Brian, Elsie, Jennifer, Karen, Kathy, Kylie. Lindsay's here too. I see Kimberly. Great. Nancy. Awesome. Paula, Rachel, Tara. Cool. I'm glad to see everybody um, joining us. It's I've got by my watch 1201. So I think we should maybe get started. How are people feeling today? I um, started us off with a, um, a question in the chat box. What's your tech question? So let's get our fingers warmed up for the webinar ahead of us with that. And I'm going to ask and make sure that my lovely um, friends at Bill Highway have started the recording and that we are all set to go. So guys, um, we are here today to talk about tech tools. And actually what we're really here today to do is to share with you some of the tech tools that we have the opportunity to talk about at the um, October um, Component Exchange. Sexy. So this was our sexy tech talk sessions. Um, obviously, I just uh, just so you know who's here with you. Um, Bill Highway is, of course, once again our host. What I love about Bill Highway is that uh, they they are kind of uh, th this conversation about tech is right up their alley. You won't hear anything specific, but I do want to just make sure you know that part of what they can do is help you solve operational data and financial complexities. You know, all those things that make um, our chapter management lives a little tough. So um, definitely, uh, if you have any questions for them, feel free to connect with them afterwards. Um, and obviously, I'm Peggy Hoffman. I am with Mariner Management. And um, I like to say that we do the soft side of chapters, the people side, both the staff side and the volunteer side. And the reason why we think this conversation is important is because technology is the way that we can connect the people. And so I'm really super excited to be able to have this conversation today. And I want to start us off with a very simple poll. I want to find out what do you most need a tech solution to do for you? Um, now. We're not really talking about personal things here. We really are focused on chapters. But let's put that poll up. And I'm just curious to see for the folks that are here online, um, you know, you can pick as many of it as you want, but is it about helping the chapters market and communicate? Maybe it's about communicating to your chapter leaders. Maybe it's around registration or money or data collection, info from members. Or maybe, just maybe, it's about something that's not on that list. And if that's the case, as you are filling out the poll here, please feel free to type in on the chat box what other reason, uh, other solution you're trying to find um, tech, through technology. Give it a few more moments. Um, Sarah, how are we doing? Do we have a number of people logged in? Uh, chapter activity reporting, Karen. Yes, we did not put that up there precisely, did we? But you're absolutely right. That's a that's a big, big question for us. Let's see what we've got. Yeah, helping chapters market or communicate is our top one, but that's followed pretty closely by communicating with chapter leaders. Um, so it often comes around that conversation around communicating. A um, number of you are talking about um, data collection. That's now growing to uh, second place. So lots of lots of reasons that um, we need to use technology. And fortunately, today we've got some examples of what some CRPs are using to approach those very those um, those very exact same things that you're asking for. Um, now, I just want to, as we get started on this. We know that providing uh, the chapters, the tools, and the resources they need to be successful is just an age-old problem. We also understand that there are hundreds, thousands of options out there, and that kind of makes it a little bit tougher. But one of the things that we have found through our, our session at, um, at SEXI and in our research for that session is it's not really about the tool, it's about the problem. If you start with the problem, Sometimes you will find some rather interesting solutions. And as I walk you through just a handful of the more than 16 solutions that we got at the SEXI conference, 
you might notice a, a little bit of a theme, and that is that when you start with the problem, sometimes it's the simplest tools that make a difference. So with that in mind, let's show you a couple of things. Now, one other element that I want to show you as we start this, I know you want to get into the tech tools, but you have to get into the tech guide first, the guiding questions. And so one of the things that we did introduce at the beginning of that session was how do you decipher what you're about to see? In other words, what are the guiding questions that are going to help you listen with your ears open in maybe just a slightly different way? So I wanted to bring these questions and put them in front of you as we get started. And I want you to really kind of focus on, again, I'm going to harp on this a little bit perhaps, but one and two. So what is the current pain or the challenge that you're trying to solve? And then what tools or technology do you already have that are trying to address this challenge? Because when you start with that first question of the, of the problem and the second question of what you're doing, that will guide you to looking at some of the tools that we're going to, we're going to take a look at. All right. Um, real quickly, just want to mention to you that, of course, this slide deck will be available to you afterwards. So if you're scribbling down those guiding questions or if you have your phone out and you've taken the picture, no worries. We will get those questions to you. Shall we jump right in? All right. Several of you mentioned chapter reporting. Several of you mentioned um, activities. Several of you mentioned helping folks um, under, helping folks communicate. This first tech tool is going to be useful for you in a couple of different ways. Both Tanya Coogan and Christine Tipton stepped up to the plate to talk about their very favorite tool, Wufu. Hufu, Wufu, you might say. <laughs> when they were sharing their slides, they were making it pretty clear that this is a very robust online form builder that can create efficiencies in two different places. That's right. You see, it can be used by HQ to do things like the chapter reporting, and it can also be used by chapters who are trying to do contact forms or online surveys or registrations. What I loved about this is that the way, as they talked about it, they gave us some different perspectives. So at the start of it, they talked about the fact that for the lead organization, it's customizable, DIY, but I love the way they put it for components. Needs are met. When Christina showed this to us, we kind of all chuckled, but then she showed us lots of different ways that the components are being able to turn this into a tool that makes their life easy. You know, Tanya started off her presentation and she said, how am I using it? Well, you name it, I'm using it. What I loved about this whole idea, she did everything from finding this as a way to get, ease the process around um, roster changes for the chapter leadership down to pulse surveys to find out what was important, what was, what was top of mind for her chapter leaders, and for that matter, the chapter leaders for, for their members, so that they were able to be able to address solutions that would make a difference at the immediate need. In the end, what we learned from these two wonderful presenters is that there really are three reasons that we ought to take a look at WUFU. The first is that it's so customizable. It's, it's super simple to customize everything from the information you want to collect to the questions you want to use to even the themes for any particular um, item. The second is, is that it's completely do-it-yourself, that um, it saves members' time, volunteer time, but it also saves staff time. And one of the interesting ways that they pointed out is that because this can be set up at any time and it's really easy and, it's, and, it, and the price point is so free to, to low cost, that you could actually not be hampered by a very busy IT department or a very busy small staff. It allows you to actually, be, to actually get over those, um, those resource restrictions to be able to get a solution that you need right away. Oh, by the way, did we mention RevReady Forms? Because I think that was the thing that caught my eye. Here's an example of just how easy it is to use. You can see this is just a, simply a screen grab. Over on the, um, on the left side of your screen, you see that you have these very standard um, 
um, uh, form builder that you can use. It can be dragged and dropped to create what you need. The third reason why we would use this is because it truly is multi-use. And as um, Tanya said, and Christina absolutely agreed, it is um, bang for your buck. Here's three examples that are showing on the left side. But think about this, grant submissions, conference registrations, requests for information, membership applications, internal tracking function. There goes your chapter um, reports again. Any way that you can think of, any, or rather, any information you can think of that you want, you can create a customizable form that will allow you to do that. So staying with this DIY, Samantha Herman and Liza Morardi got together and they talked about Canva. Now, I will admit to you that as a manager of PRSA Maryland, our chapter, um, we're constantly looking for that quick fix for um, quick fix for art, for the poster, for the header, for the for the um, Facebook header. Um, and a staff member here has been playing with the Canva, so I was very excited to see what other folks were doing with it. So let's take a quick look. The Canva process is you basically go online, you select a template design. You take that template, you pull in the photo, you pull in the text that you want, you shift the layout a little bit, you customize it, and there, very simply, you download it. You can easily print, you can create a web, uh, a web graphic that you can share via email, you can actually, in terms of printing, order whatever you want in terms of quantity. It's as simple as, they're showing here, you take a picture that's compelling with a group of volunteers or a group of members that are doing something exciting. You bring it onto the template. You use the heading options over on the left, drag them over here, and you create something that will get eyes, will get clicks. Now, what I really love, speaking of clicks, is that in sharing this story, one of the things they did was they shared the results. Now check this out. So they're using all different kinds of things. They're using posters, they're using banners, they're using postcards. They said that using Canva helped them break through and get a deeper reach. For Twitter, they boosted their organic impressions 12%, their total engagement 154%, and their link click 78%. On Facebook, they boosted impressions 72%, engagement 57 and clicks 42 Why? Because you're using images, you're using, um, you're using rich design, and all of this is DIY. So Samantha went ahead and she showed us just some different um, elements of chapter implementation. Um, her chapters are now using it. She said you can apply for Canva for a nonprofit. Um, the approval takes very little bit of time. One of the things that really helped, though, was to set specific branding. That's right. Help them so you have brand alignment. They also offer some real quick and easy ways to, um, and training options for people to learn how to use the tool. Super simple. What I thought was really interesting as we were listening to the two, to the two ladies is, um, well, Lazo said, you know, where she learned it, sort of like how I did from someone else, but more importantly, she learned it about this from her members because you see, her, her members are teachers. They're, they're um, folks with very low budgets for design. Um, be, and so her leaders obviously love Canva. Uh, they taught her about it. In fact, they, they showed her some of the things that they were doing. Um, the Ohio um, Counselors uh, Conference, excuse me, the Ohio Counselors Group showed her a number of things. Um, and if you're looking at the, at the screen and you're going um, from the top uh, left-hand corner, they did, their, they, they did their promotion for their conference. They announced their um, slate. They did a call for open for elections. They've also been using these to help them promote their members, um, what the members can do in their schools. So they have a poster, they have a coupon, they have a flyer. So it's really cool 
when you can see that something is so simple that your members are already using it. And it's simply a matter of getting what they're using and sharing it across the system. Now, maybe just because she's a tiny bit of a skeptic, Lisa did go ahead and say, well, let me see how easy it is to use Canva. And she says that in a matter of very short time, she was able to create her own image. She happened to be participating in the um, hackathon. And one of the things that we're, we came out of a hackathon was to develop the ultimate chapter management tool. And we already have a promotion for it. So let me ask this question. There's lots of DIY options that are out there. Do you or your chapters use any of these form builders or design templates? Let's open the poll and see what you guys are using. And while we're doing that, I see there's a great question. Someone wants to know how Wufu is different than SurveyMonkey. And given the fact that Wufu comes to us from the, from the product lines of SurveyMonkey, it's a great question. So SurveyMonkey is, a, is intended to be a survey um, and a polling, and it does great jobs of getting information and doing analytics. Wufu is their form builder, which um, allows you with a little bit more flexibility to collect data and be able to use it um, for things like registration lists, for things like um, anything that needs to be submittable for things um, for um, things where you're going to go back in again and you're going to update information time over time. So you're not keeping a survey open, you're keeping a form open. Uh, Brian, yes, Google Drive for forms. Love it. I've used it for a number of times. Okay, let's see what people are using. Let's close this poll and see what folks are using. None yet. Well, that's great. Hopefully, you'll be able to take a look at some of these things. You've now met four of your peers who are using at least two of these. And we also had, um, we, and I'm going to go look through my little book here. It was Cindy Anderton from um, the Association for Vascular Access who's using Jot Forum. So you've got a number of CRPs now that you can, um, that you can tap on the shoulder and ask them to show you a little bit about how they're using it. Let's close that and keep moving. We've got a couple of other things we want to show you. The next one I want to talk about is, um, is, you know, how do we get our chapter leaders to pay attention and then therefore use the many resources that we offer? And this is where Beth comes in. Now, when you think about this, um, Cisco's study predicted that video marketing will be responsible for about 80% of internet traffic in uh, 2019. And in fact, expecting that video and emails will probably skyrocket click-through rates somewhere, they're suggesting two or 300%. So obviously, video is going to be a very important tool. We kind of know that, but it's just going to get ever that much more important. But here's another reason why I think it's worth us taking a really good look at video, is that studies are showing that viewers will retain 95% of a video's message compared to 10% when reading text. Now, I will tell you that, that Beth actually proves that point. You see, when, she, when they first launch their leader toolkit, they have a fabulous leader toolkit. It tells everybody, um, it gives them tools, it gives them templates, it gives them guidance on how to, how to put events together. It's just very, very rich. But people kept still calling up. They didn't know where to start. And she went, hmm, we've got to get people to use this. We've got to get people to better understand it. We've got all this text, and people can't find it. Enter video. Enter the Leader Toolkit How-To Video. What they did was they went to Paltoon, and they said, you know what? How do we take a great resource that's text-heavy and allow people to explore it in a short little vignette? Now, Paltoon is, again, another DIY, um, but it allows you to create awesome presentations. Um, it's extremely free. There are upgradable where you can get a chance to begin to then use some, um, get beyond the, the animations to use some uh, more higher end graphics. But it allows you to create these short, like three minute videos, which are very engaging, and the animation pulls you in. 
when they saw the success of the first one, which was simply a, hey, here's a tour of all the leadership tools so you don't have to try to get us on the phone, they then took two of their most asked questions about financials and about chapter bylaws and created the same three minute engaging video that's con that has continued to evolve into some additional ones. Now, was it successful? Cisco, HubSpot, the, all that research on video says it would be, and they did find it was. They're finding people are engaging more with the content that they're pointing them to. The toolkit overview video has been viewed oh, over 300 times, nearly 100 times for the chapter financials and bylaws, about, about 73. But it continues to grow. I mean, the, the, if we look at all the research and the importance of it, this ability for us to be able to meet people at the same space, to be able to give them the opportunity to have these real quick learning opportunities, priceless. And using Paltoon doesn't cost a lot. Got to ask you a question. How many of you are using video in your bag of tricks? Let's pull that pulse up, let's see. And if your answer is yes, what I want you to do is to start typing into that chat and tell us how you're using it so that we can begin to take this idea of a very simple thing that Beth has shown us and see if we can build on the idea to find out how else we can do this. Let's see, we got anybody? Okay, nearly a third of you say, that you are using video. So I want to see this chat light up right now so we can take a look at some of what the ways that you are using it. And if anyone is using any of the other, Animoto is another um, video um, DIY. If you're using any other ones, go ahead and put those in again. Um, oh, Rachel, awesome. You're saying recorded best practice trainings are posted online. Beautiful. So how do you use them? Uh, type in and tell us. All right, uh, and what what format are you using, um, Rachel? Video scribe, John, do you like that? Tell us a little bit more. Um, oh, Jenna, you're using testimonial videos again. Another great way of connecting, um, of of using the 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 power of video to get a message across. All right. So speaking of making things just a little bit easier, that's where Zapier comes in. Let's see, how do I explain um, Zapier? Hmm, I think maybe the best way for me to say to you is that um, Zapier um, is the glue that will connect somewhere around a thousand different web apps. Um, so what you do, so what Zapier does is it allows you to create zaps, um, which are workflows, right? They connect a couple of apps together. It usually starts with a trigger, like so there's an event that happens over here, um, and that when that happens, the zap goes to work, and it kicks off the workflow. It basically takes stuff that you have to do over and over and over again, and puts it together in one workflow. Oh, by the way, that the technology does, right? So it automates the tasks in the background. Uh, bottom line, you focus on stuff that's important, not on the little things. Now, how many of my CRPs on the phone today have tasks that they do over and over again that you would love to give to somebody else? Well, I'm going to suggest, why don't you give it to Zapier? Now, did I mention over 100 apps? I mean, over 1,000 apps, excuse me? Well, that's true, and apparently it is growing. Let me give you the example of two common ones, though, just so you get a sense of how this works. So let's say that you're using Wufu and you're using MailChimp. So you have a form set up in Wufu, right, that collects an email address and contact information. But you have a list in MailChimp, so you want to add, you want to add a subscriber to get this, um, these great updates or this great lead letter. So you use a zap to automatically send new entries from Wufu and plug them into MailChimp. So instead of you downloading the Wufu stuff, putting it over here, and then uploading, right? You don't do that anymore. A zap does it. Well, let's take a look at um, another common way that we see people that are see the common way we see folks using this. So let's say that you're using Eventbrite to register people for a webinar. 
and you happen to be like us using Zoom. So here's the issue. Because Zoom will then send out all of the information to the people who register, wouldn't it be great if you could get every time someone buys the ticket in Eventbrite that you have a zap that creates the registrar, registration in Zoom? So now you have all of the incredible um, capacity of Eventbrite. And at the same time, you're making your job easy in terms of being able to send out the Zoom information. You can do that with a zap. Now, sticking on this next theme, which is how do you make things a whole lot easier? We had a wonderful opportunity to hear from Jenny. Now, I will tell you, I saw group map in action. I was working with Jenny on um, a, a series of a road trip for leadership training. We were doing three um, small one day um, sessions for leaders in three different places across the country. And so we were challenged with this idea of the first part of the day was to ask a question, um, ask a question and do some ideation around some solutions. And we knew that we had three topics that we really wanted to be able to talk about. But more importantly, we wanted the sum total of these three, of these three very different uh, events. We wanted all that stuff to be together at the end. So what you could do, which what we normally would do, is set up all of these wonderful flip charts. And we would take notes. And then Jenny would go back. And not being at all busy, would take all the time to uh, um, assimilate all of that into a document. Enter group map. <laughs> it is the high tech, easy tech version of the flip chart. In essence, what you do is you um, set up in the software program, and you can use um, many of your own template or many templates that group map has. You set this up, um, you then invite the team, you and give them access to the um, to the group map um, on on their laptop. Uh, they capture the responses, and then you pull all the stuff together, analyze it, and report it out. In a practical way, the way that um, uh, Jenny did it, um, they brought in laptops, which they were already uh, already had group map loaded, so the app was loaded. Um, she set up the questions. The first question, for example, was what is getting in the way of success in these area? And we had them, the groups, they had three different groups. They talked about education, membership, communications, and marketing. She asked them to pick a quarter in the group. Um, and then they simply opened up the laptop and they just simply typed what they heard. Now, what we asked them to do was if it was about education, put an E, M if it was membership, C if it was communications and marketing. And the reason why we did that was because this is what the output would look like. Then, um, when Jenny pulled all of these together, she was able to sort by the M, the C, or the E, and we had a beautiful, robust list of barriers some great ideas about how you could, um, yeah, new solutions for that, and then also action items for local leaders to do to incorporate the understanding of the barrier and these fresh ideas. So super way of making sure that in a very quick turnaround, Jenny could give each of these groups exactly what they had talked about. So they would have that prompt for the memory. And then, and this is the cool thing, she could look across all of these chapters and all of these volunteer leaders and see trends for future training. Cool. So let's just pull that together. It's easy to use, low cost, individual group sessions, sort, analyze, and do away with the sticky notes. Now. Staying with this idea of how do we make sure people know what's going on and retain information and are able to use that information going forward, I have to tell you about what Lindsay did for us at the end of this session. So it, we were in a powerhouse session. We had um, an amazing number of people coming up and telling us about tech tools. We had conversation um, in the audience, and at the end, Lindsay gets up and she shows us what I would call the, um, the, the home run tool, Kahoot. Now, if you haven't used Kahoot, Kahoot is a 
Um, it's a game-based uh, learning and, and uh, trivia software. Anybody can use it. Um, super, super simple, free at most levels. In essence, what she did after we had done all of this conversation and talking is she put up a quiz of five questions, and the questions basically said, uh, checked. You know, if the problem was this, where was the solution? If, um, if we wanted to do this, how could we, how could we um, apply this tool to it? And very importantly, who was the person we can reach out to and get more information? So she had us all on our, on our phones, just on a very simple phone. We were, we were competing to see who could win. We did have a winner who did get a, did get a gift card. Um, but it was a great way of, of helping us take what we had learned and make sure that it was cemented. You can do this in lots of different ways. I've seen Lindsay open up her leadership um, program with a couple of really quick poll polls to help people um, acquaint themselves with what the organization was offering. So you can quiz them very in a very fun, fun way. You can quiz them on rules and regs. You could quiz them on resources that are available. You could quiz them on, on, on content that they've just learned. Super simple way of adding um, interactivity at an, in a particular event while also able to then um, check people's learning. So I don't have, and many of you have used this before, but it's one of those easy to use tools and Lindsay would be happy, I am sure, to show you. And I think she's on right now. So Lindsay, give it a shout out <laughs> if, you, if you're still in, the, in still some place where, um, where you can type and, and, and listen. So one of the interesting things is um, when we were putting together the component exchange, uh, we were really looking for an opportunity to use tech tools that we thought CRPs and their chapter leaders could use. So we, we were really living by this notion of you don't have to talk so much about some of them. Sometimes you have to just use them. And here are the collection of the tech tools that we used as part of putting together the program. So we used Eventbrite, which obviously was for registration, for payment, for collection, for name badges, and all that kind of cool stuff. One of the interesting things about um, Eventbrite is some of you who came to the event probably noticed that one of the things we did was we asked you a couple of questions. And those questions allowed us to then um, help sort you into some table assignments. Um, it also helped us gear some of our conversation to the audience that was going to be in the room. So Eventbrite becomes not simply a collect the registration, but it also becomes a way that you can more customize your own program. We also, by the way, <coughs> excuse me, we also used um, Eventbrite as we began connecting to Sign Up Genius and, and looking at who and, and making sure that we were getting the uh, the involvement on both of those. So Survey Monkey, we used it initially to crowdsource our session topics. Um, super simple. It was a two question poll. Um, you guys told us what was really important. You um, you you gave us some priority order, and of course. We use it as our um, post-event survey. What I really love is Abigail uh, Salonzo from ANFP told us about how they're using SurveyMonkey to, um, uh, to uh, make their SWOT analysis, if you will, um, uh, more efficient. So what they do is they have these uh, chapter engagement teams, which will go out and work with chapters. And um, what they've been doing is they send these folks out to work with a chapter, and they spend, as, they spend all this time getting the lay of the land, if you will, of the chapter. And so they modified that process, and they use SurveyMonkey to, the, um, to collect the SWOT analysis in advance. And what's really cool about that is they not only are able to get that information ahead of time, but because it's confidential and it's individual, they also, get, um, they also get input from more folks um, by going out to the full board, for example. And sometimes, don't we all find that um, there will be two leaders and they're in the same group and they have two different, view, two different points of view, right? And if you're doing it in person, you might not get both of those two points of view out. But by using SurveyMonkey, you do. And then that means that the person that's going to go out there to help 
um, facilitate this meeting, this planning session, sort of knows also where to, you know, where to push, where to, where to beg the question, if you will. So SurveyMonkey's got lots of, uh, lots of opportunities, lots of different ways to use it. We also use Poll Everywhere throughout the session. Now, we use Poll Everywhere not only to um, help the audience see who was in the room and to share um, and to share where we were alike and where we were different, and we did an amazing word cloud um, that captured what we call our chapters or our components, right? We also used it to um, curate questions from the crowd, because sometimes, you know how, oftentimes you'll have a panel discussion, and then you've got time for Q&A, but you're passing the mic. And so you've got 100 people in the room. Maybe you've got you know, 75 of your chapter leaders in the group, and three questions get asked in that amount of time. Well, there may be a lot of really important questions that just don't get asked and therefore can't get answered. We were using Poll Everywhere to be able to curate the questions in real time. And then, um, and then we, we reviewed the questions and we saw where they were like questions and we combined questions and we were able to ask our, our um, TED Talkers, for example, a series of questions. What was really cool though was a couple of questions came up that needed a little bit of digging. And um, at break, I was able to then come back and say, okay, three of the questions you asked were this and we were able to announce the answers. We had some additional questions, which we're, we're um, actually gonna do a little bit more work on getting the answers to. So Poll Everywhere as a way to curate questions allows you to take the event, make sure all these verses are being heard. It's a great way to bring your introverts into, into, the, um, into the room, right? Sign Up Genius, I think many of you may have used it. Um, it is a great product. We used it because we were having the campfires and we wanted people to choose where, what topic they were interested in so we could actually assign the tables ahead of time. And so we had folks sign up for their, sign up for their tables. Um, so the other thing that's not up here is Doodle. And I know that a lot of people use Doodle Poll, but we use Doodle to bring our experience squad together and to bring our tech talkers together. So there's lots of ways and lots of different technologies that are out there that can be used. So I, I got to ask this question, please type in, is there a tech tool that you have used that, um, that we didn't mention that we ought to mention in a future um, webinar? We'd like to continue to do the webinar topics around technology because we truly understand that this is a way we can bring people and ideas together. We can both um, uh, make our jobs easier as CRPs, but also make our volunteer leaders easier as CRPs, but also to bring in, to curate data, ideas, feedback. So please, let's light up the chat feature with some things that you're being used. Tracy has your hand raised. Tracy, um, tell us, uh, <laughs> uh, Tracy, tell us what, you're, um, what you'd like to ask or share. Um, <clears throat> San Diego chapter learned something from um, a uh, local, another chapter. They're the American Society of uh, Landscape Architects, San Diego chapter, and it was our architects um, who um, turned us on to a, um, a um, thing called brown paper tickets. Um, and it's so funny, my, my board members call it brown paper bag, you know, whatever. But anyway, <laughs> um, it's, um, it's great. It's kind of like Eventbrite. Um, but what you're not locked into is you're not locked into paying the fees. You can, um, you know, and this is what I always tell people, it's a convenience fee. Um, and, and that is they can send a check or they can pay online and you can do your registration list, your name badges. Um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's very similar to Eventbrite. Probably not as visually beautiful as Eventbrite, but still uh, you can brand it you know, with a, um, a logo or your flyer. And, um, and then if you want to make it a public invitation, in other words, it's just beyond your members yeah. and anybody can see it. It's, it's been great for us. Great. And you know, I'm glad you brought that up because um, I'm working with another nonprofit group. I, I have a little dance group on the side. And one of the things we're doing is this big event. If anybody's in the Baltimore area and you want to, um, uh, play with art and um, and and we're going to use John Lennon's um, song Imagine to um, create dance and art around it and that's a whole side thing but 
we were trying to figure out how to get tickets, and we didn't want to pay for them because they were very nonprofit. And it brown bag came up, so I'm delighted to hear it. brown paper, brown paper, brown paper tickets. There you go, brown paper tickets. We got to yeah. type this in so we've all got this in our chat. Brown paper tickets. So thank you for bringing that up, and I'm glad to hear that you used it because now I'm going to go back to my group and suggest it. Um, yeah. Um, thank you. Uh, so. So Tanya, yes, Zoom, we should have mentioned that. <laughs> We've used Zoom a number of times. Um, we're using it now. Um, we use it for our board meetings, um, lots of different ways to allow us to bring in video. And we're recording this, and that's a beautiful thing. If you're gonna do something with your chapter leaders, um, you can obviously record it and then archive it. So thank you for reminding us that we're doing that. Anyone else doing anything else? And I, I saw something from, I'm just scrolling through here. John, you said you're using some way to the, 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 the short video, um, and I didn't see what you were using for the short video concept. So go ahead. Oh, video scribe, I think is what you were saying. Okay. I'm just scrolling through and seeing that because I love that. Um, <laughs> so, um, wonderful, wonderful. Let's see, uh, CVent and Convention Planet for location sourcing. Oh, I love those two. Thanks. So keep it going, guys. We, we've got um, an additional eight or so. We're collecting all the stuff from Sexy, and we are certainly going to be able to give you more. Here, by the way, is the workbook, The 16 Ways to Tech Your Chapters. Um, and we are going to continue to um, pull things together and continue to invite you to tell us more about the tools that you are using. Or if you've heard of a tool and you don't know if it's good, now, let's ask the community. Uh, bring it up to us, and we're trying right now, we're looking at how do we pull together a way to continue to get folks to give feedback from each other. You know, there's nothing like having somebody, like the folks that I've shared with you today, when they use something and they love it, to be able to um, talk with those individuals. All right, so a couple of additional resources we want to leave you with. Um, on the on the Mariner blog, um, we have a uh, Tech Tools for Chapters blog post. It is a, it is a living post. Um, we go ahead and whenever we hear from you, if we hear from more than one person that something is good, it goes up there. So it's not in a complete endorsement, but we don't put it up without someone having told us and someone having verified it. So. Um, please, if there's something that you would like us to add on that, I will be more than happy to add it on there. Let us know. You know, over time, um, uh, the Bill Highway and I have been pleased to be part of this, at least for the last couple of months. We're constantly doing webinars where we're highlighting some of the things that chapters and uh, CRPs are doing. And there are two particular webinars that I think would that fit in beautifully here and would be great resources. We did one, Tips on Speakers Bureaus, um, where we looked at lots of different options, very low-tech speakers bureaus to very high-tech speakers bureaus. So that's a great webinar to go back and take a look at. We also, a um, great um, uh, uh, look at how AIGA was uh, uses Slack, and in fact, um, uh, Corey, Corey from that organization was one of our TED Talkers, and I didn't highlight it here because we have a whole webinar on it right there, the Slack webinar. And finally, um, I, I, I really wanted to point, if you haven't already seen the chapter banking white paper, um, it's, it's a really cool look at um, applying technology to this nuisance that we have around helping chapters with their finances. So four resources by all means, not the only resources. And if you've got a resource that you can, that you wanna um, share, like someone had said earlier, there was a best practices on video. If you've got a link, you know, you can throw that link into the chat right here, and then we can share that, share that link with the whole group. So, I gotta ask this question. Um, what will you try? Let's get it. Let's get the chat going here. What will you try? Let's have a conversation around. We have this great conversation. We talk a lot about tech. Um, what in here is something that you think that would be useful for you? Any thoughts? Go ahead, guys. Um, let us know what you're thinking here. And I'm going to go and scroll through a little bit, a little bit to see what we've got coming here. Um, 
Poll everywhere. Good, 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 good. And I am, I've been quite a bit happy to help anybody with that. Um, Wufu, Canva group maps. <laughs> yes, Karen. I'm glad we hit all, <laughs> maybe all of your areas. Awesome, awesome. And you know, one of the things that the 16 uh, folks that, uh, actually 18 total folks who work with us on this, um, they're open to you contacting them to get more information. So what I will tell you is if you want more information, uh, you get the slide deck. We've, we've got contact there, but we have additional contacts. And if you let uh, Bill Highway or Mariner know, we will do our best to, um, to connect you with that individual. Um, and then the other thing I want to mention um, is if you guys do videos with Paltoon or with um, Scribe and any of the other ones here, um, why don't we share the videos um, with each other? I mean, why don't we go ahead and um, let let and and see the work that we're each doing? I think that that's going to make a, a huge difference. Um, not only that, but if you're if you're um, uh, Paltoon, for example, on bylaws is exactly what I want to say. And I can steal it. Remember, that's the that's the flattery. So that's more flattery, right? <laughs> so keep typing in there. I want to uh, take a little bit of time here to share with you a couple of other things. Um, and first and foremost, is, I, I love this um, that we got. Uh, uh, one of our folks said, you know, this is the feeling you get when you share an awesome tech tool. Is your, you know, all um, all uh, all fist up. Um, um, uh, Tracy, someone said Tracy's got a question. Zoom seems to be more and more by larger organizations. And yes, yes, we're a very small organization, and we use it. Take a look at their at their um, at their pricing options, and understand that if it's a small group and it's under an hour, uh, Zoom is free. So um, uh, we grew out of that pretty quickly, but um, one of the groups that I am I am a um, volunteer for. We're very small, and we use the free version. So a Zoom feels like it could be too much. Um, and and if you wanted to get it, you know, robust with enough seats, it's going to be um, it's, there is going to be a price point when when we were looking at. Um, and I can just tell you, Peter and I went through this process to find one that was the that was we thought the most price friendly, and we and we came to Zoom when we compared this platform against other ones. So, um, you know, take another, take another look at the pricing. Um, so I'm going to have you keep putting your questions in. Um, we've got about, um, uh, we've got about another 12 minutes. This is all for you guys. Um, we wanted to allow plenty of time for your questions. So if you've got a question, raise your hand or type it in. And um, we will um, we'll be glad to answer it or to connect you with someone who can answer it. And while I'm waiting for you guys to do that, yeah. So Karen, you said that you love Zoom too. You use it all the time. Um, so are you are you finding that the pricing is been pretty good for you guys? Um, go ahead and and chat in about that if that's the case. Um, and while I'm going, um, you know, there are a couple of other resources I wanted to highlight for you. How many of you have been to a chapter roundtable? They're in D.C., Alexandria, Reston, Rosemont, and Chicago. Um, if you've been to a roundtable and it has been worth your, your while, can you go ahead and, you know, type right in there and tell us that? Um, love to know. Um, know if these are are filling your need um, but in any case we've got a couple coming up next week in the DC metro area and then um, uh, 11th and 12th in the uh, greater Chicago area and if I can do um, a real a big plea out there um, the 2019 benchmarking study, we are in the process right now of finalizing the questions. Um, thanks to the folks that have sent us questions. If you haven't sent it, hurry up because we're just about finished the assembly of them and we need to know that we got the question that you particularly are looking for. You can do that by going to surveymonkeyr.chapters and um, fill out the survey. It's, it's, two, it's two questions. It's opt in to be for us to send you the survey when it's ready and then tell us what questions that you've got. Um, 
but the benchmarking study is coming. I'm real excited. Bill Highway is coming on to help us um, really make sure that this is a this is a great uh, product. We're going to be once again using uh, Kevin Horton from Horton. Um, research who does the best research i believe in the association field he's going to be helping us and um really uh this is the opportunity for um for uh um for all of us to know what each other else is doing and where we can make changes i want to pause for a moment uh thank you karen um she was saying the small monthly fee that allows for 25 video feeds at one time which is and she's, a, and she's a team of 24, so it works beautifully. <laughs> um, so I, I love it. That's a great, um, a, a great endorsement for, for Zoom. Thank you for sharing that. Appreciate that very much. Um, finally, um, the drinks are on. I was going to say on us, but um, they're, they're on us in the sense that it's Bill Highway is um, – is um, co-hosting here at Cheers to Chapters Happy Hour. Now, if you're looking at this, this is connected with uh, um, the the tech conference, but it's going to be at Grace's Mandarin, uh, Mandarin excuse me, um, which is right there on the waterfront, um, Tuesday, December fourth at six thirty. So, um, lots of lots of good stuff to to uh, lots of good opportunities for you guys to share with folks. Um, hey, um, so. One of the cool things that the idea of the community here is, um, is that uh, not one person has all of the ideas. Um, we all have lots of questions and we all have lots of ideas. So it's really about connecting the question to the ideas that we have. So you got a couple more minutes here. What else do you wanna share in the chat? Or does anybody have any other, any other comments or questions? Patrick, thank you. <laughs> Thank you for the shout out. Um, really appreciate that. That that is that's pretty cool. Um, and I just see that if you are looking at the chat, you will find out that there's the Bitly to sign up for that. That happy hour is now in the chat. And Karen, thank you for saying that. The, um, the CEX conference is a labor of love, and we absolutely um, uh, delighted that you found it was a great opportunity. And I'll just put a plug right here, if I can. Um, we will be in October. We will be in 2019. Um, we are scouting out locations right now. Um, I'm going to probably keep it in the D.C. metro area since it's pretty convenient um, uh, because you can come by train, plane, automobile. Um, but we will also be doing a call for, of course, our experience squad. So if that's something you think you'd like to do, um, well, listen, w watch for the invitation or heck, just send us your name now and we'll put you, we'll put you on the list. Um, it is a conference designed by the community for the community. Um, and Bill Highway and Mariner, we're simply the workhorses that, that bring your conference together. Um, guys, this has been a wonderful, wonderful conversation. Um, the chat has been, again, wonderful and rich. Um, and we're only here because um, all of the folks that took part in the um, the tech the tech um, section there to help us out. So, is there anything else for the greater good? Anyone going once, going twice, go have a super day, and we will see you next month. Look for our invitation to the webinar. Have a great day. <laughs>